Trent has a fairly aggressive plan to develop along the west bank of the autonomy. Um, some of it would be commercial maybe, some of it would be housing, a variety of things. You just lost the twin pad deal to have the city's twin pad arena there uh, over environmental and native issues. The school is very well known for both those things. Do you have any concern that people are going to start looking at Trent as a difficult place mm -hmm. to go because there's going to be strong factions who are opposed mm -hmm. to development generally? It's a, it's a good question because particularly in a research park, the businesses need to know that if they come and they express interest that we can get them into the park and, and having the partnership with the city is really seen as a strength because they can see that we've already got a good relationship. Um, I wouldn't characterize our development as aggressive. We've been really careful to go yeah, through I, a, I think a I'm not planning phase. So much phase. as clean tech commons, which yeah. is pretty much done. You're okay mm -hmm. there. You, the zoning's yeah. there. Thinking more about future stuff, mm -hmm. um, a little more off campus. Yeah. So we've uh, received lots of feedback over the last year, a year, year or two, and, and so we've undertaken a very different planning process than what's been done in the past. So we've just come out of now a year's worth of field studies indigenous engagement, really looking at understanding the land um, and what's happening on the land and the heritage and history of the land before we talk about the land uses. Uh, so that isn't something that we've done before um, and I think that was where um, some people said, you know, it would have been useful to have some you know, additional voices, you know, give their perspectives on that. Part of the challenge is whenever you're doing planning, um, people are less interested in that until things start happening and mm -hmm. <laughs> so the, our best efforts to get people engaged in, in the planning planning stage, um, you know, doesn't always result in all that information coming forward, but we've, we've, we've got a very, very different planning process and it's taking longer and right now we're trying to line it up with the city's official plan process, the North End Environmental Assessment and the mm -hmm. Transportation Plan. Um, so just trying to take a bigger view of, of the long term and, and uh, you know, how do we see all of these pieces coming together and dovetailing with what the city's actions are so that right. we're, we're on the same Just page. Just quickly, remind, remind me of something. Is, the, is there still a plan to change the main access off of Water Street North and build a new bridge and all that stuff that came out mm -hmm. five, six years ago maybe? Yeah. I, it, we, and really, we don't know until the city's mm -hmm. completing their transportation mm -hmm. study, so that's part of the challenge. They're right in the middle of that. So mm -hmm. they'll be doing, I understand, more consultation later um, in the next couple of months Julia, on that. a question I asked uh, Rhonda mm -hmm. Keenan. You know, we, uh, we're living in a world of uh, three big trade deals, uh, mm -hmm. CPTPP, a yeah. Canada-European trade deal, and uh, NAFTA too. So in, in a world that capital flows are moving in nanoseconds mm -hmm. every day, how does uh, the Clean Tech Commons, how do we get that message on a national and international mm -hmm. basis. Because ultimately, we want investment to flow into yeah. this, mm -hmm. significant investment uh, to flow into it. How yeah. do we go out and chase that down? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a couple of ways we do that. Um, one is we have alumni all over the world. Uh, so uh, it is a focus of our conversations and our visits with alumni. We look for alumni in the sector all over the world and make sure that they're understanding what we're doing. Uh, we're in trade shows all over the world, so uh, it's key that we're where others are, where people are making decisions. We've got you know international interest in some of those venues, um, and just building that um, network of ambassadors, and that includes government and government agencies, and, and having them see uh, what's happening at, at Peterborough as an opportunity to you know launch any of their ambitions, and, and so it's getting many ambassadors and advocates talking about right. what we're doing. By the way, your new sign looks great. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Jeff. Uh, I mean, that's a, a, a great point you bring up about ambassadors and my travel in, in business, uh, it used to always be uh, Peterborough hockey, and it still is mm -hmm. somewhat. But more and more, it's I went to Trent, or I went to Flem. I mean, the colleges that have been here, mm -hmm. at, you know, and these are people that could be anywhere in the world, and those connections. And it's good to hear that uh, Trent is still connected in that flow of students that come mm -hmm. in and then back out. I want to go back to a different flow, though, and it's traffic flow. Mm -hmm. I have uh, traveled that part of the world uh, quite often coming across University yeah. uh, Road where the curve is, mm -hmm. and when Trent lets out, it's pretty hectic, and I was always yeah. wondering, how is this going to be yeah. if there's a fully functioning Twin mm -hmm. Pad arena there? Mm -hmm. And was that one of the challenges? I know Pioneer Road was, was redone, and it's, yeah. you know, it's safer now, the hill's mm -hmm. gone, and it's all set for the next advancement, yeah. but, but was that one of the issues that was a bit of a concern, was traffic getting to that arena? And, it, and I gotta say, when the arena change happened, mm -hmm. it was sort of like, just kind of 
happened and mm -hmm. oh okay mm -hmm. most of council voted for it and mm -hmm. no one really complained except for mm -hmm. people from North Crest and right. yeah. that want an arena there and by the way there's lots of room for an arena there yeah. uh, there's going to be an available building mm -hmm. next door and it's developable but yeah. Yeah, the city certainly knows that there's um, traffic challenges as we are growing in the north end and, and uh, increasing residential in that area. And before Malcolm Hunt left a couple of um, uh, planners ago, he accelerated the timing of the transportation study, seeing that you know we were going to be growing at a pace probably sooner than they had anticipated expanding. Um, and yes, yeah, certainly I travel in and out of the campus often lots of times <laughs> of day, and we're trying to do some things, uh, get people to enter off of Woodland Drive instead right. of going in through the main campus and again that's why we're kind of trying to sync out plan timing along with what the city's doing for the transportation study but the, one of the key things is that we need to have these facilities on major public transportation routes and so that's a, that was a factor in the the location because we have the Trent bus going and one of the solutions is of course having more public transportation so that people are not driving um, and so there's a you know a lot of work undergoing right now to see how do we get you know that busing we've got the great um, opportunity right now we've got a new busing service uh, that Curve Lake and Lakefield are mm -hmm. partnering to bring the bus down in from the the north end um, and so that's you know that's one of the solutions as well uh, making the campus as walkable as possible so that people are not requiring cars just to get around